you do life uh, delighted to have you join us again for uh, a time in God's Word together and uh, if this is your first time if you didn't get a chance to connect with us before that also is online uh, but I begin reading something out of 1st Peter and I want to give you the context first uh, this was a time of persecution actually it was a time where rather than people being confined to their homes they had to leave their homes they had to leave their businesses they were literally driven out of their country uh, to the surrounding areas to escape persecution from Rome. And so uh, the duress factor, the uncertainty factor, um, many, many of the things that we're dealing with and then I think a whole bunch more people we're dealing with that Peter is writing to. And so I wanna pick up uh, in verse three today, I read just uh, the first two verses uh, yesterday and I want to pick up on on that thought and just continue down through this a bit with you today it says this is first uh, Peter 1 3 praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never spoil perish or fade this inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is already being revealed in the last time I'll come back and read just a little bit in a moment but I want to highlight the fact that uh, like yesterday uh, Peter is starting with God not the problems he's at, he's he's not unaware of the problem it's grace and peace be yours in abundance now he's talking about praise Praise be to God. I want to tell you something about praise and how it's how important it is in your homes. I, I believe um, over the last number of years, probably decades, uh, the church at large has actually been recording songs and they're they're on YouTube and they're on Spotify and there's there's so many great things. Be playing more worship music in your homes than perhaps any other time. I believe praise praise sets an atmosphere, and you need an atmosphere. Of God's presence and so have some time where you worship God uh, but I would just say as a background uh, don't just have the TV running all day don't don't have news running all day I, honestly I think there's a time in which we're not escaping reality but we can get uh, bombarded by information that's not helpful God's presence is helpful and and pra praise is part of that and we don't just praise because we feel like it I gotta imagine some people were saying yeah but Peter you know we're, we're on the run from Nero and I think Peter would be saying yeah but praise be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ yeah but you know we're having to, to go through economic challenges but praise be to God like there's always a reason in which to start with God get your focus on him uh, praise him it, it's a it's a conduit between us and heaven for God to do some things in our life so start with praise it doesn't take away all of our problems, but I'll, I will tell you this, it will create a uh, atmosphere where God can do something with that. But he also used this word, and I wanna highlight it in verse five. It says, who through faith are shielded by God's power? Who through faith are shielded by God's power? I, I wanna encourage you with this. Uh, God is going to be a shield over you. I, I think that can happen in many different ways. First of all, I believe many of us are going to be shielded. You know, we're doing wise things. We're doing some things that are practical. But I also want you to believe this. I believe God can do some things for you, give you strength, give you uh, an immune system, give you help. Like, I, I, I feel like for most of us, um, we're going to actually have faith to believe that this is not a time where we're, we're going to even wind up sick or or you know whatever it may be let's be ready to pray for people that are let's be compassionate for people that wind up with something but you know what many of us that's not going to be our story I want you to actually believe that there is some security that you have available to you in Christ so that I, I think many of us are supposed to be serving we're supposed to be um, being models and examples even if it's from our house even if it's through social media or emails or texts or phone calls uh, i saw a picture on social media uh, just today it was taking place outside of a um, you know kind of a convalescent home and the it looked like a father and a son perhaps and they were talking on the phone with each other but the son was sitting outside the window of where his dad was 
you know, there, there was a sense where he couldn't do everything he wanted to do, but he wasn't going to be, be completely restricted either. Um, he got as close as he could and still remained safe. And I just think God's going to give us some creative ideas like that. Maybe we can't all be together in the same room. But you know what? Here's, here we're doing something we weren't doing last week. And we're encouraging each other through God's word. There is security that comes from that. Some of the security you're going to have is if you don't isolate. I said on Sunday, we'll be separated in certain ways, but we're not isolated. We don't have to be. There is technology that can help us with that. And so gain some confidence through the security that you have in Christ. He primarily goes on to highlight how that comes from heaven. You just need to realize at the end of all this, the reason why Christians have confidence is not only that we have power now, but we have a present reality that has yet to be revealed, but it's heaven. You know, in this case, people were worried about Nero killing them. And yet Peter is reminding them, you know what? Um, somebody can do something to you, but they don't have the final say over your destiny. God does. And, and I, I say it a lot over the years, cancer doesn't have the final say over your life. Coronavirus doesn't have the final say over your life. You know, many things don't have the final say over your life. God says there is in heaven, uh, protected by himself, your inheritance. And that's supposed to give us confidence now that the worst the world can do is not the end of the story. There is a heavenly reality. And so those of us that have our eternity secure, that's why we should be more confident. That's why we should offer peace to people, offer grace to people, serve people. Think about creative ways in which you can help and serve right now. Don't just isolate. Don't just think safety. Your security is in Christ Jesus ultimately. And let's be ready to be his hands extended. But I want to read this, this final part here too. Uh, because he does talk about the trials. In all this, you greatly rejoice though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief of all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, which is of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So he's saying, hey, there, there might be a fire, but the fire doesn't burn you up, the fire refines you. Let's believe that in this uh, time of change and, and uncertainty and doing things that actually, what if the difficulty becomes some refining? What if, what if it strengthens us? What if it expands us? What if we don't just have our souls saved, but other people, honestly, they start coming to us, they start calling us, they start emailing us, I need help. Let's be ready for that too. Because I think about the story of the three Hebrew uh, guys in the Old Testament, in Daniel, the Bible says they were thrown into the fiery furnace. But not only did a fourth being show up, which you know Nebuchadnezzar thought it was looked like the, the son of the gods, but we, we really believe it was Jesus and a, a pre-incarnate Jesus is in the fire and their, their cords get burned. So they're, they were bound with cords. Their cords get burned away in the fire. They are not burned. They don't come out smelling like smoke. Uh, God shows up in the story. God released them in the story. So believe that even difficulty can have a refining effect. And a, and a strengthening effect when we uh, do what Peter was reminding the people to do. Start with God. Uh, praise him. Get your focus on him. Get grounded in him. Stay connected with other believers. Let's encourage one another. And then ultimately, let's believe it's for another purpose. It, it's for us and others. And uh, so that's where I want to pray about today. I want you to have a theological security growing inside of you. You are not alone. God's with you. You are not alone. The body of Christ is out there to serve and to support you. And then we need to be ready to serve uh, those around us. So let's pray. It's a great passage of scripture. Keep reading through 1 Peter. I mean, it's a, it's a great book. I might take you through it. You know, we'll see where that all goes. But uh, today I wanted to continue in that book. It's really rich. Jesus, thank you for the fact that 
Um, our security, our ultimate security is in you. Our eternity is secure in you. If somebody listening to me today does not have a relationship with you, I pray even right now, they would know. And if it's you right now and you're listening to this and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you just need to know you can pray and invite him into your life. You don't earn that. You can't do enough good work to deserve it, but you can receive it by faith. And just say, Jesus, come into my heart. I need that security that you can bring by being my Savior. Say, Jesus, I confess my sins, and I want to make you the Savior and Lord of my life. And then for those of us that are followers of Jesus, um, continue to praise him. Continue to get your focus on him. So, Lord, as we do that, show up in homes. As I prayed yesterday, I pray that homes would feel holy. I pray that praise music would begin to, to radiate uh, in and from our homes and that you would you would show up Lord with your presence in ways that gives us confidence and security and creative ideas for how we not only can get through this but be refined by it and be effective in it I pray in Jesus name amen amen enjoy the rest of your day we'll connect back up again tomorrow God bless you